Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from my hotel room here in Mexico City. We're going to be looking at 10 airplane incidents, accidents, and I've got one minute to debrief. It's the one minute debrief, so no messing about and let's get started. Okay, number 205. What you can do is when British Airways gets in front of you on the runway, go down to go. Okay, nice. UPS 747-8 coming in for landing. Ooh, she's not touching down. Oh boy. And the nose is up again. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Okay. Cool. Okay, there's one really cool indication uh, you can see in this missed landing, meaning they came in for landing, the plane sort of floated along the runway. They touched down at one point, but probably way too far into the runway, not within the touchdown zone. And what is great to see, the main gear touches down, the spoilers do not deploy, and as they perform the go around, a so-called flap load relief function comes active. You can actually see that it flaps 30, and then as they perform the go around, the flaps automatically retract to uh, flaps 25, and then once they're airborne, is a command that to put the flaps to 20, and then they go off, and then obviously positive rate gear up. This is a great video just to show the flap load relief function. Okay. Ah, boy! <laughs> oh, oh, boy! Okay, 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 okay. Ah, all right. This is obviously something really nasty. Um, just look at the little executive jet. It is taxiing way too fast towards the runway. Yeah, so that is actually a runway incursion incident. Um, so the little executive jet is approaching the runway way too fast and it probably has already crossed the runway holding point at that intersection. And then obviously the uh, colleague coming in with his uh, 737 MAX, if I'm not even mistaken, uh, then uh, well, kind of got scared if he's actually going to stop or is he going to enter the runway. And then, uh, yeah, the qu no question about it, he has to then perform a go around. It happens more often than you think. This could be a miscommunication with ATC, we don't know. The aircraft on landing has received its landing clearance, but due to some miscommunication, uh, maybe the executive jet was cleared to cross or you know line up on, on that intersection, we don't know. This could have been really, really dangerous, especially in IMC conditions when you don't see um, the incoming traffic or the traffic uh, at the holding point. So whenever you line up onto the runway, especially in IMC conditions, double check that the approach sector is clear or that you have a reassurance of ATC that there is no aircraft on approach. Ah yes, a B-52 in clearly crosswind conditions. Ah, nice. <laughs> okay, what is so special about this video? Now, if you look at the video one more time, you can actually see, uh, just upon touchdown, look at the landing gear. It's entirely sort of rotated or, or aligned towards the runway center line. So the B-52 is not an, an aircraft you want to decrab on the runway. Uh, I guess it has a lot to do with its wingspan and probably other things as well, I don't know. But this is one of the key features of the B-52 that it can actually rotate its landing gear to keep it on the center line that you do not have to decrab the aircraft upon touchdown. That's actually really, really cool. I haven't seen this uh, sort of on the video. So uh, yeah, great video, well done. All right, the Turkish Airlines 737 coming in for landing. Ah, uh, oui, oui, oui. uh, no. Okay, it's pretty obvious what happened here, to be quite honest. You immediately see it's physics. <laughs> okay, the plane comes in for landing, it touches down, it bounces, and then one of the pilots decides, okay, we're going to perform a go around. So, performing a go around with an aircraft that has wing mounted engines below the wing. The danger of that is, as soon as you apply go-around thrust, there is this enormous output of energy obviously coming out of the engines that will create a very nasty pitch-up momentum because the engines are mounted below the wings. 
And that, obviously, then the entire plane rotates around the engines, more or less that axis, and there you have that tail strike where the plane is sort of just sort of hits uh, the tail on the runway. Nasty. It is something very counterintuitive you would have to do, you would actually have to push down, but in, in a go-around you are so triggered to obviously pull up. Yeah, it's just a very unfortunate situation. Um, I guess the plane is, I mean, it's repairable, but the plane would have been AOG at least for a couple of weeks to, to, to maintain or repair that uh, tail strike at the back. It happens. It is that pitching up momentum created due to the massive amount of thrust, especially on the 737 and that long fuselage. <laughs> okay, we have two sports planes on the runway. Are they performing a simultaneous, ah, okay, simultaneous takeoff. All right, tail draggers, really bad, bad visibility. Whoa, no, 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 no. Oh my god. <sighs> wow. I have flown tail draggers in the past and they are a bit of a nuisance when it comes to taking off. The primary reason is your visibility forwards. You can't really see where you're going um, because you literally have your nose in your way. Um, only until when you, when sort of the tail comes up airborne and then you gain speed and then you kind of have a view where you're going and then you yeah, rotate and, and go airborne. But what is clear here is that the colleague here is, it is, it must be some kind of race plane. So he's going down the runway, can't really see where he's going, and it looks as if the other colleague, who is probably wanting to part with him simultaneously, must have had some engine failure, whatever, and did not start his takeoff roll. And then the other plane just sort of crashed into it. Oh my God, that could have, that is so dangerous. I mean, I'm not sure if this is an, a practice or an air show or whatever. Ah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, maybe also badly positioned plane that, you know, that it's in line of the other one taking off. Luckily, nothing happened. I read up on it. Uh, all is good, but still super dangerous. Tail draggers are not to joke with, trust me. Okay, it's a 767 landing and taking off and Antarctica. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is beautiful. Ooh. Oh, an absolute greaser. And then full reverse thrust. No questions asked. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, nice, nice, nice. That is cool. Uh, okay, this is a beautiful video. What I would like to know, I mean, how does an aircraft slow down on an, yeah, snow-covered or ice-covered runway? I mean, this, is it primarily relying on reverse thrust? Do the auto brakes kind of work? Um, I am sadly not in that type of operation that I would know. I would have to read up on it, but it absolutely, it looks so stunning. Maybe there is an Icelandic pilot among my followers. Please comment below if you kind of know how that operation works or how the plane slows down. Um, stunning. I think, I guess there's a lot of it relies on the aerodynamic braking, meaning that the spoilers deploy and obviously the reverse thrust. And then, yeah, so this is, this is just beautiful. Um, maybe one day I'll get the opportunity to land on Antarctica. This is stunning. Uh, congrats on the Iceland Air to, for performing that kind of operation. Really cool. British Airways, Airbus A321. Coming into yeah, landing. Oh, one down. Ooh. Ooh, easy, 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 buddy. Easy, oh, easy. No, no, no. oh my god! Ah, Chili! Shoot. Okay, now this is. Ah, funny. So it is definitely a bit of a bumpy landing in terms of wind. Okay, we touch down with the right hand main gear first. Then we touch down with both main gears. And then the, the plane must have experienced some kind of wind coming from the right hand side, sort of bound to flip it over. Um, that made it really dangerous and I guess that was the point where the pilots then decided okay we are going to perform a go around and already the pitch attitude is relatively high then yet again you have toga thrust you have the pitch up momentum especially on the Airbus AT21 with that extended fuselage and then you have that incredible power that is sort of also delayed a couple of seconds um, as you give toga and then that this pitch up momentum is so brutal. Um, and you, as I said before, and it's counterintuitive. You want to pull upwards, but you technically have to press downwards because of the incredible pitch up momentum. 
Okay, we're in a glider. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I know what they're doing here. You can see here is that it's a glider and the glider is going through the exhaust of one of those cooling towers of a power plant or whatever. It, they cause turbulence. Not just turbulence, they cre create this incredible updraft, which you can actually hear on the vertical speed indicator. You hear that beep, 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 beep sound in the background. That shows that the plane is actually in climb. And it does so obviously when you go over these induced clouds from a power plant or from a cooling tower. So funny enough, when you come into the ILS on runway 25 in Stuttgart, you are actually flying right across over one of those cooling towers and it states in the Jefferson chart that the, you can expect some kind of light turbulence going over these cooling towers. It's pretty funny. So this is what they've done. Should they be doing it? I wouldn't recommend it to, to, to be honest, but uh, yeah, they had some fun that day, I guess. <laughs> what, what is that? Oh no, don't, don't tell me it's the tow bar. It's the tow bar. Ah, the question is how? I, I don't, I haven't, I can't explain how do things like this happen? I mean, you get pushback, then the pushback driver decouples his tow bar and his truck or whatever, and then you, just before you taxi, you go clear right, clear left. Okay, it is difficult to see if the tow bar is still on your nose wheel um, as you taxi forward. It's probably not that long that you can see it uh, in front of your nose of the plane, but uh, I mean, I'm 100% sure that you have to hear that. And I don't know, I mean, you just stop, but they just like continue. I mean, no, it makes no sense. Sorry, uh, not to blame any airlines here, but this is just, I can't make any sense of that, sorry. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, debrief video. Uh, there's a couple of more that I've done in the past, so just check out those as well. And uh, if you want me to do more, just click the like button or write it into the comments. Send me those videos. I always like to see those videos and then uh, debrief them. And if you're into reading and you want to sort of become a better version of yourself, get this book. It's in Amazon. The link is in the description box below. You will not regret that. And here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning, especially of those short little debriefs. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe. <laughs>